I have recently realized something, Apollo, I've recently realized something, and that is, is that one person in every friendship group is a bit of a party pooper. Bit of a boring Brenda, bit of a dreary Derek, and I've recently realized that person is me, okay? <laughs> okay, now what's started happening to me is I've started getting invited to both stag do's and hen do's. And uh, it's because I'm gay. Um, I know, I don't really need to come out when my hair's this short. You get the gist. Uh, <laughs> but basically, I get to invite to stag do's and hen do's. And I think it's because my straight friends look at me and go, oh. <laughs> we don't know where you go. So <laughs> I just get invited to everything. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to bang on about being gay. I'm not going to bang on about being a lesbian. I'm not going to give you the ins and outs of it, because to be fair, there's very little of that. Uh, <laughs> came out years ago, about 10 years ago. I come from a very working class family in Portsmouth. I remember coming out to my Uncle Marty. I said, Uncle Marty, I'm gay. And he went, what, like full time? <laughs> and I said, yeah, because if anything, I'm doing it more than 40 hours a week. He said, I don't blame you, baby. I won't fancy shagging a geezer either. <laughs> so on the whole, they've been very supportive. <laughs> I'm not a dater. Some people are daters. That's how some people refer to themselves. Yeah, I guess I'm a dater. <laughs> Who are these pricks? I hate them. <laughs> some people love doing the dating so much, they want to do it on TV. Imagine having that kind of confidence. Imagine getting in from a date and going, well, that went so well, the nation should watch. <laughs> and then applying for first dates. Who are these people? Because I love first dates, love the date bit, lovely. I hate that bit at the end. Ooh, no thanks. <laughs> They've got to talk about each other. Oh, great. Did you enjoy your creme brulee? Brilliant. Come this way for the character assassination. No thanks. <laughs> but then, because I have watched every single episode of first dates, my smart TV started suggesting other dating shows to me. So I was like, here, Suze, we think you might like dinner dates. I did. <laughs> Loved it. Loved it. Now, I'm going to tell you about the most recent episode that I watched, OK? Now, it's quite a mediocre man. Now, I have to be very careful here. I'm not a man-hating lesbian. Just wasn't a great example of your people. Now... <laughs> Over three nights, this man went round three different women's houses for dinner. They all go to quite a lot of effort. The girls put on a nice outfit, make a nice bit of dinner, make the house look a bit fancy, lovely. Then on the fourth day, he gets to choose one of those women to take to a posh restaurant. Fine. Here's the cruel bit. They tell all of them to get ready like they've won the date. <laughs> yeah. So they're all there going, oh, I think he really enjoyed my bruschetta. And then ding-dong, one person gets the mediocre man and the other two get a sad lasagna. <laughs> and they're like, ah, oh, Suze, is that the cruelest part of the show? No. The cruelest part of the show is that the camera crew sit around to watch them eat it. <laughs> Just... Action! I'm a vegetarian. <laughs> eat the lasagna! <laughs> but the worst show by a mile the TV show that I cannot believe exists is Naked Attraction. <laughs> right? <laughs> always a reaction! You know what happens at this bit? Is there's always someone that's seen it and their mate hasn't. And they just go, it's properly fucked up. That's <laughs> what half of you have just done, isn't it? Right? <laughs> Let's find out, actually. By way of cheering, give me a cheer if you have not seen the TV show Naked Attraction. <laughs> right, okay. Madam Hill, what's your name? Emma. Emma. I'm going to explain, Emma. I'm going to explain the concept and naked attraction to you. And you're going to think to yourself, Ear Sues, previous to your gig tonight, did you nip outside and smoke some crack? Because that's how mental it is. <laughs> right, Emma. A girl walks out on stage. She's like, I'm looking for a boyfriend. And the host goes, brilliant. We've got six naked men in tubes behind. <laughs> Then the host says to the girl, what are you looking for? And the girl will always do the same thing. She'll go, oh my God, you've really put me on the spot. And you think, no, you chose to come on this show, moron. <laughs> she goes, um, well, I guess I'm looking for a boyfriend, <laughs> but also a friend. Um, <laughs> um, I really like going like, to European city breaks, maybe someone that likes travel. 
Um, and I really like music gigs as well, so maybe someone that likes music. And I guess if I'm being really honest, what I'm looking for is love. And the host goes, brilliant. Let's see if you can find love by judging dongs. OK? <laughs> There's a screen in front of all of them. Every round, the screen goes up a little bit more to show a little bit more of the naked body. Every round, one man gets eliminated until the end, she's got a couple of nudie fellas to choose from. OK? <laughs> now, Emma, first round, screen just goes up to the knees. There's always one bloke who's got really rough feet. Really rough. Like he was an extra in The Hobbit. And he just <laughs> never took the feet off afterwards, right? <laughs> now, she clearly looked at them feet and thought, well, them trotters ain't coming home with me, right? And you think, well, that's the end for him, not the end. They don't, they don't shoot him. <laughs> you think it's the end of the show for him, but it's not. It's not the end of the show, because he then has the indignity of the screen going the whole way up. <laughs> so you see his penis and his face. Then he has the most awkward moment in television where he steps out of his tube, walks over to her and gives her the most uncomfortable hug you have ever seen. <laughs> Well, you can tell all he is thinking is, don't touch the lady with your dick. Whatever you do, don't touch the stranger with your dick. And then his sad little ass walks off stage. Now... <laughs> the next round, the screen comes up to the waist. And let's be honest, it is the round we are all watching for. It's cock o'clock. Now... <laughs> It's not going to come as a surprise to any of you. There's a lot of people in this evening. I bet it doesn't come as a surprise to one person in this room. I ain't seen many willies. <laughs> I ain't seen many of them. I ain't seen many willies. I ain't seen many. I ain't seen... I'm not a connoisseur when it comes to willies. I was straight for a month when I was 18. I don't have the wrists, OK? <laughs> <laughs> but even to me, even to the untrained eye, there was one that I was like, oh, there's something up with him. There was something... <laughs> there was something just not quite right about They're not meant to have a corner. Are they? <laughs> Halfway through, it had like a proper corner. <laughs> now, she clearly looked at that one and went, ooh. <laughs> she can't do that, can she? She's got to go work on Monday. She's to look a bitch on TV. <laughs> she said she has to do a little lie. Emma, see if you can see where she went wrong. She went, um, I'm going to have to get rid of number four. Kind of weird dick. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to have to get rid of number four because the way that he's standing, he doesn't really look like a very confident guy. <laughs> and I'm only really attracted to really confident guys. And I thought, he has his penis out on television. <laughs> How much more confident would you like this twat to be? <laughs> The indignity of the screen going the whole way up. So you see the willy that matches the face. Stepped out of his little tube, walked over to her. I don't know why, I thought he'd have a limp. He didn't. Right, okay. <laughs> then he gave her a hug, doubly awkward because of the crooked cock, right? <laughs> then it cut to him backstage. And you, oh, you could tell he was embarrassed he'd been voted off the show so early, right? But he was fronting it out. He was really fronting it out. He was like, yeah, 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 a lot of people probably think I don't feel very good about myself right now, but I actually do. I actually feel really good about myself and I feel really confident about my body. And I thought, mate, you've confused confidence with adrenaline. <laughs> In two hours, you're going to feel like utter shit. <laughs> really? When? Well, suppose it's back to teaching for me. <laughs> Bet it's not. <laughs> you're going to be Mr. Weird Dick for the rest of your career. I suggest you retrain immediately, mate. <laughs> it's nice to be here. It's nice to be here back in London. I've recently been abroad working. I've recently been in Australia. It was amazing. It was brilliant. I loved it, right? But I was a little bit worried before I went uh, because the gay marriage bill had recently gone through. And unfortunately, sometimes when positive gay legislation happens, homophobia does sometimes fall out of people's faces. <laughs> now, I did get a tiny bit of homophobia during my trip. Right on the last day, in fact, which was a bit disappointing. And that was because on the last day, I went to visit family. Uh, <laughs> I've, got, I've got an uncle.
uncle that lives in Australia, he's a massive bigot. Now, he wanted to tell me why he had voted against the gay marriage bill. Why he had voted no to same-sex couples getting married. I'm in his kitchen, right, I'm having a cup of tea, and he turns to me and goes, well, well, I suppose I should tell you, I suppose I should tell you, I voted no, voted no about the gay marriage thing, voted no about the gay marriage thing, because you know, what next? <laughs> what next, you know? People are gonna wanna marry animals. <laughs> Not the next logical step, is it? It's not the next logical step, even for David Attenborough. It's not the next logical step. Because when women got the vote, it didn't lead to dogs getting the vote, did it? <laughs> the suffragettes weren't there going, ah, oh, brilliant, we've smashed that now, corgis. <laughs> I'm very lucky, I'm very lucky with my own mum and dad. My own mum and dad, they've always been very cool about having a gay child. I feel very lucky for that. They've always been hugely accepting of who I am. One thing that does throw my mum and dad is the LGBT plus thing. <laughs> the letters really throw them, <laughs> okay? <laughs> right, I'll give you an example. A little while ago, my dad rings me. I speak to dad about every three days. I'm very close to him. He rings me, I can tell he's stressed immediately. He goes, hello, baby. I said, all right, dad, what's up? He went, listen, I've got to talk to you. I was like, oh, I thought something bad had happened. I was like, oh my God, Dad, what's up, what's up? He went, now listen, listen, I've got to ask you a very serious question. And you need to know, I don't care what the answer is. I love you to death. I don't care what the answer is, I just need the truth. I said, Dad, mate, whatever it is, I'll tell you the truth. He went, all right then, baby, you tell me the truth, you tell me the truth. Do you want to be a boy? <laughs> I was like, no, Dad, I'm just a gay girl with short hair. And he went, oh, all right then, here's your mum. We've watched a documentary. <laughs> They've watched something queer. It's confused them. Which type is she? I don't know. Give her a ring. <laughs> uh, you've been a wonderful audience. This is my absolute dream to play live in the Apollo. My name is Susie Raffle. I'll see you again.